Hello everyone, my name is Klaus Leobold. I am the co-founder of the Flight Levels Academy and I'm really super happy that I'm part of this conference here. Thank you so much to JP, to uh, Jose and to Amat uh, for organizing this conference. I'm pretty sure it will be awesome. Um, all right, so what is the, to the topic I'm going to talk about? Flight levels, the missing link to business agility. So what is it about? So I will try to somehow get the message across what you're doing when you're doing flight levels in 30 minutes. Uh, but before we start with the what, maybe we should take a look at the why. Why should you do something like flight levels? Well, there's a book called Rethinking Agile. And in this book, I try to mm, yeah, get the message across why it would make sense to do flight levels. So in the end, this, this book is a story. It's a story about an agile transformation of an organization. And this organization, well, they wanted to improve something. So their main um, thing that they wanted to improve is, the main goal was time to market shall go down. Um, well, the competitors were much faster than them. They, are re they, they were acting on the market much faster, could, could use way more opportunities. And they were like, okay, we need to change the way how we work fundamentally, otherwise we are history, kind of. And well, their solution was, let's do a reorganization, because with a reorganization, everything is fine, of course. And um, they reorganized to cross-functional agile product teams. Cross-functional teams, I guess everybody knows it. The idea is tear down these functional silos because they are so bad. And um, yeah, let's build cross-functional teams. And they even built cross-functional product teams. Product teams means that one team is only working on one product. So cool, right? Um, what was the result? The result was the time to market increased. And that's not good if you want to decrease uh, time to market, right? So um, why is this the case? Well, I discovered some problems in this organization. That's what I uh, somehow wrote down in this book. So there were, of course, some more uh, problems, but I think these four topics, they are quite, well, the major problems. There were no actual interactions between the teams. Yes, they had these cross-functional uh, product teams, but the point is they were like, okay, we need to tear down the functional silos, which is a good idea. But what they did, they built cross-functional silos which is not a good idea. So the point is not so much about tearing down the, the silos, it's more about drilling interaction holes between the silos. And that's what they didn't do, actually. There was no end-to-end -end coordination of the value stream. This means they were only taking a small part out of the, of the, out of the thing that actually mm, generates value for the customer. So they were only optimizing the software development part, the IT part. There's way more than IT in an organization, of course. There was no agile strategic portfolio management and I kind of like the, the, the problem number four, they, they approached this agile transformation as a waterfall project, big design up front and so on. But yes, so these were the problems. And if you think that you have one of these problems in your organization, um, flight levels might be might be helpful, let me put it that way. So um, yeah, this is more or less the why, why you should do uh, flight levels. So what we, so if, if you have some of these problems, so if you are in an uh, agile transformation or you're going to be in an agile transformation, um, yeah, you will come across these topics and flight levels can help you. And that's what we did in this organization. Um, yeah, we established flight levels thinking, right? So if this is the why flight levels make sense, what are we doing when we are doing flight levels? Well, in the end, flight levels is, I wouldn't call it a framework or method or something like this. For me, it's more like a, a thinking tool, uh, a thinking model. It helps me to find out where in an organization you have to do what in order to achieve the result you want to achieve. Um, that's, that's, that's the essence, more or less, of flight levels. And in the end, it's just five activities on three levels. So it's quite simple and straightforward. What are these activities? So when you're doing flight levels, you are visualizing your situation. 
visualizing the situation, especially in an agile world, is nothing new. We know scrum boards, we know camping boards. So visualization is a cool thing, but it makes sense to visualize um, your situation because uh, we want to see what's actually going on. Visualize situation, well, in, in knowledge work, most of the time it will be, I don't know, some, some kind of board that we are building, right? Uh, if you're more in like in an operational kind of thing, uh, environment, um, visualization might be something different. It doesn't always have to be a board, but the point is we want to make it explicit how things work around us here. Number two, activity number two is we want to create focus. Create focus. Um, the, the idea behind creating focus is um, we need to um, start finishing work and not and stop starting work more or less. So the idea is we need to focus on getting work done instead of um, starting work. So we create, so we only start a certain amount of, of work, focus on this and try to finish work. So there's, there are plenty of ways out there how you can create focus. Uh, a lot of you probably know Kanban and the working process limits. That's a kind of uh, creating focus, but you could also do uh, sprints like time boxes, right? Uh, we know from, from Scrum, or uh, I guess Cliff Hazel will talk a little bit about uh, sequencing uh, priorities, kind of sequencing work and prioritizing work tomorrow. Um, so there are multiple ways of create focus, but the point is we need to make sure that we're creating focus when we are working. What else? Establish actual interactions. I guess that one is very important because, um, well, visualization and focus doesn't solve any problem. Human beings um, solve problems. So we need to generate um, or we need to create areas where the right people talk about the right stuff at the right time. That's what we call agile interactions. And um, practice number four is measure progress. Measure progress means, well, doing flight levels for the sake of doing flight levels is quite unsexy. We hopefully want to achieve something with it. So measure progress means, okay, if we want to achieve something, Let's, 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 let's establish a kind of feedback loop which tells us, okay, are we on the right way? So if you want, we like in the, in, uh, in the example of, of the book, uh, this organization wanted to improve time to market. So it's maybe a smart idea to measure time to market so that we see whether we are making progress or not. These are uh, the four, uh, four activities and activity number five is that we operate and improve everything. So the point is, you don't do this once, you do this all, this, all the time. So it's, it's more like um, creating a culture where this is part of your DNA, right? So uh, if we just take a look at these five uh, activities, it's like, well, a lot of um, yeah, frameworks out there uh, would fit into these uh, five activities. For instance, Kanban would somehow fit in there. I'm pretty sure design thinking and of course Scrum fits in there. So, um, well, um, what, is, what is the difference between all these uh, things? So why, why does Scrum and Kanban and all this stuff uh, basically is fitting in there? Well, the point is um, flight levels is method agnostic. So it's not about the method, but the point is it's not about these five activities. The point is you need to apply these five activities on different levels in your organization if you want to achieve business agility and not just agile teams. So this is where the flight levels kick in. So these five activities, um, yeah, we need to make sure that we are uh, doing them on different levels in our organization. And what are these levels? Well, flight level is a term from aviation. The higher we are flying, the more we see. And if we're flying very low, um, we see a lot of details, but our vision is somehow restricted, right? And the same is true uh, in our organizations. In organizations, we can fly very low, where we see a lot of details. This would be flight level one, the operational level, teams that are doing the operational work, right? So teams should apply these five activities in their daily work, right? Um, usually an organization has more than only one team. So we would see multiple of these flightable one systems in our organization. Most of the time, it's the case that one team alone cannot deliver value to the market. So we need multiple teams that are somehow collaborating in order to um, yeah, generate value to the market. And business agility is about acting 
agile on the market, right? And this is exactly where Flight Level 2 kicks in. Flight Level 2 is end-to-end -end coordination. This means on this level, we make sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. And we do this by applying exactly these five um, activities on the Flight Level 2, right? So this means these teams, the teams that actually have to collaborate, they are trying to come up with a visualization how they are collaborating. They are creating focus across the teams. They are establishing actual interactions. They are measuring progress and they are operating and improving. So all the teams uh, together build this flight level two system here. And of course, we connect this flight level two coordination system with the flight level one systems. Flight level two is the world of your products and services and all the stuff that the customer loves, right? Um, most of the time, an organization has more than only one product. So you, you, you will see multiple flight level two systems, of course, right? And uh, there could be a situation where we have dependencies between these flight level two systems. For instance, if you change something in this product, we need to change something in that product and in this product. I guess everybody knows situations like this. So how do we solve this? Well, representatives of these flight level two systems, they basically meet and they try to apply the five activities again uh, so that they can address these topics. And the output is, or might be, another flight level two board. And on this flight level two board, um, yeah, the products they are coordinating um, their work among each other. So this is flight level two. There's one more flight level. We can fly a little bit higher still. This is flight level three. Flight level three is strategy. Strategy means we're trying to um, yeah, align the work in our organization to the strategy. And well, we try to make strategy happen. We try to implement, we try to deliver strategy. This means we're connecting the flight level three system to the flight level two, maybe even to the flight level one systems. Um, yeah. And again, also here on the strategy level, we try to apply the five activities, visualize, create focus, establish interactions, uh, measure progress and operate and improve, right? Mm -hmm. Most organizations have more than only one flight level three systems because maybe we have multiple sites in, in multiple countries. Maybe we have, I don't know, multiple products and so on. So this is the flight levels. So the idea behind it is um, it's not about better or worse. So we can't say flight level three is three times better than flight level one. It's also a different problem, right? Um, but the main point is we need to apply agile, uh, the, these five activities on each level in our organization. On the operational level, level one, level two, the end-to-end -end coordination, and level three, the strategy. If we do something like this in real life, um, well, it looks more like this. So I've never seen this, like there's one flight level uh, three, flight level two, flight level one, or something like this. That's something what we call work systems topology. So these are just some uh, examples from our workshops that we run uh, across this planet. So um, in real life, it looks a little, it, it looks a little bit different than from uh, the poster what we've seen before. Okay, so now Karen, may I ask you to add a link to the chat because I would like to do a quick poll now. Please click uh, on the link that Karen is sharing. You can also see it here, paulev.com slash klaus222. And please answer this question. Which flight level is the least developed in your organization? Do you think flight level three, flight level two, or flight level one? Nice. There are already some results coming in. Flight level three is leading. 65, 32, 3% think 2% flight level one. Okay. Nice. Yeah, flight level one is gone. Cool. So we see um, flight level three then flight level two and then flight level one. Maybe this will change uh, still a little bit. The poll is still open. So um, <clears throat> if you haven't, uh, oops, 
If you didn't vote, please. <coughs> oh, my voice is gone, sorry. Mm. You can continue voting and I will take a look at it uh, afterwards. Okay, flight level three, flight level two, flight level one. That's interesting because most of the time when I do this poll, flight level two is slightly ahead of uh, flight level three. So we see a different result here. Interesting, but cool. All right, so um, this was basically the three flight levels and the activities that we are performing on the flight levels. Yes. Um, but this alone is not enough. So one thing is to have these flight levels, but we need to connect them. So uh, what does this mean? Let's go back to the work systems topology. So that's, that's a, a real life work systems topology, what you see here. So what you see is um, more or less a, it gives you an overview what kind of flight level one, two, or not what kind of, uh, which flight level one, two, and three systems do we need in our organization and how are they connected? You see here the company wall, that's a flight level two and flight level three combination. That's actually quite interesting. We see this very often in real life, uh, flight levels somehow merge together. Or here, these like business intelligence, uh, OEM and private seller, um, these are flight level one and two um, combinations. Uh, this core experience customer and dealer, these are just flight level two systems. And here we have the flight level one systems. This is a work system topology of an organization like they're doing car classifieds. And they're, they think that their customer groups are based, they, that they are building products for the customer group. So we have customer groups like the end customer, like the dealer, like OEMs are customers, private sellers. So um, yeah, this is the, the work system topology that we came up in this organization. I think it's quite important that's not the correct work system topology. It's the latest state of misunderstanding where we think, okay, that's actually how we are working these days. So this is an overview of what are um, the work systems that we need, but now we need to connect them. Uh, what does this mean uh, when we say we need to connect them? We need to make sure that we understand what are the different work items that we are managing on each of these levels and how is the work flying through uh, these systems. And yeah, I will show you just an example for this. These are, so what you see here is the company wall. The company wall is the this flight level two, flight level three combination, what you've seen uh, in the work system topology before. And this is a flight level two system, that's the dealer system, right? So there are of course multiple of these flight level two systems like you have seen before, but this is just a picture of the, of the dealer board. So what do we see here? Well, here on the flight level two, three combination on the company wall, um, they come up with the company strategy and the KPIs, what they want to achieve, okay? Um, the dealers, they take this information, put it on their uh, dealer board, and they split it up. They split it up into like, or they refine it to, okay, and what does this mean for uh, our product, right? So for instance, we want, yeah, what does this mean for our product? Don't want to go into detail here. Um, now the, 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 the flight level tool system here, um, the dealers, they generate a canvas um, and a canvas is something like, well, uh, a rough idea uh, where they think that they can, yeah, somehow work towards uh, the strategy, right? So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a description of an idea, yeah? Um, it's, it's rather vague still. So there's some kind of validation process going on here. Then in the next step, they generate initiatives out of these uh, canvases. An initiative is quite concrete actually. So an initiative in their organization, and that, I think that's important, not flight level says you have to do it like this. They are like, okay, we think it makes sense to do it like this. But an initiative in their uh, organization is like, we want to see impact on the market within three months. Impact on the market within three months. It's not like we delivered it to the market, we see some impact already. Right? Okay, so now we have an initiative, which is a concrete kind of thing that we can work on. Now one would think that they would start working on it here, but that's not what's going on here. What they are doing is they are bringing the initiative up to the company wall, to the flight level three, uh, two combination. And not only the dealer are doing this, 
all the products bring up their um, yeah, initiative to the company wall. Maybe some initiatives are flying in from the site. Awesome stuff that each and every organization is keen to do like GDPR and so great ideas from the lawmakers. And well, now these initiatives are in a competition and this competition, this organization calls strategy planning. Strategy planning means, okay, these are all the ideas that we want to, um, yeah, uh, th this is the stuff that we want to deliver to the market in the next three months. So now we are pitching these ideas to find out, okay, what, uh, what are actually the priorities uh, behind this? So we try to come up with a, with a prioritized list of initiative across initiatives across all the products, right? That's what they call strategy planning. And again, Flight Levels doesn't say you have to do strategy planning. They think it makes sense to do it, okay? It's one of their actual interactions. So strategy planning, is basically the final step when it comes to taking a decision uh, what we want to deliver. Uh, when we have this decision, delivery can start. And this organization starts delivery with a delivery planning. What does delivery planning mean? Well, some technically skilled people join the party and now they try uh, to come up with, um, I don't want to say plan, but it's like, an idea of how do we want to deliver this? So are we actually able to deliver all this stuff in three months to the market or is this way too much? Or uh, another thing is like, okay, what about the sequence? This is priority one, this is priority two, but we have to do priority two first just for technical reasons. What are our dependencies? Uh, what team has to work uh, on, on which initiative? And so on and so on. So we have some kind of delivery planning going on. After the delivery planning, we are somehow not sure, but we have, a, we have an idea what we are able to deliver to the market in the next three months. And then delivery starts. What does this mean? Um, the flight level two systems, they pull the work from the flight level two, three combination from the company wall to their flight level two again. Now, oh, an initiative is worth of three months of work. So that's, of course, way too much for a team uh, just to pull it in and start working on it. So what the teams are doing here is they are splitting um, these big initiatives into epics, right? Epic is something which is, yeah, somehow handled. Uh, yeah. Um, epics is something what teams actually can handle, right? Uh, next, the teams pull in, so we're always talking about pull here, it's not about the flight level two does not push uh, anything to the flight level one, but the flight level um, one pulls the EPIC into their team board. And on the team board, they split the EPIC into stories, right? And yeah, that's what we've seen here. That's what we call a uh, flight route. So the point is we try to um, yeah, come up with an idea, how is work actually flying through our boards? Um, this is all the flight routes of this organization. So we've just seen one flight route actually. Um, this is all the flight routes uh, in this organization. And I find this really important. So why did I come up with something like the flight routes? Well, I was, um, I was at the customer and the customer was like, yeah, that's cool. We have all these boards, but it's somehow not working as expected. And then I was like, okay, let's do an experiment. Bring all your boards or some mm, sketches of the boards uh, into a room. And now let's see how the boards work together. So there were basically all the boards of this organization in one room. And what we tried to do is we tried to generate value for the customer. So we came up with an idea something like this. And we tried to pull this idea across all these boards to somehow generate value for the customer. And guess what? In 0%, and that's not too much, 0% of the cases, it was able, to, we were able to do so. So uh, that's what I see so often. We have all these boards and scrum teams are running around, camping teams are running around, but they don't fit together. And that's what we are trying to do with uh, building, um, yeah, especially, the flight routes. Well, if you want to know more about this story, uh, there are two videos. There are the links to the videos. Uh, if you know German, that's a plus because the videos are in German, but I guess there are not, not, 
I don't guess, I know there are English subtitles. Um, so this is um, Jochen Kurz and we are talking uh, about the dealer board with him. So he's explaining how this board, the flight of the two board is working. And this is Matthias Batzak and he's explaining how the company wall, uh, together with strategy and everything, how they are um, approaching this. All right, so it's time to wrap up already. Um, what I've just shown to you is something what we call a flight levels systems architecture. And that's one of the first things what we are doing when we start with flight levels. We, yeah, we try to make sense out of an organization, right? So um, in the very first step we built, so the elements of a flight level system architecture are a work system topology. Work system topology basically tells you what are the work systems uh, that we need and uh, how are they connected. Next, what we are doing is we're defining the flight items. Flight items is basically on what board, so what, what kind of work are, are we managing on what uh, work system? Are we talking about tasks on a strategy board? Maybe not, hopefully not, but yeah, let's make a conscious decision about it and let's find common agreement about this. So what are the flight items? And then we talk about flight routes and flight routes is basically how are these flight items flying over all these boards so that we can generate value for the customer in the end? All right, so this is the work systems. Uh, this is the, the flight level systems architecture. And I would like to do a poll again. Karen, can you please share uh, the link again or can you just go back to uh, the link before? So where do you see um, a lack of clear understanding in your organization. Do you think work systems topology is something that's not very well understood in your organization? Flight items, flight routes, or are you like, eh, we are great at all those things? Ah, I see the first polls are coming in, the first answers. Nice. Flight routes. Then work systems topology and flight items. Mm -hmm. Work systems topology, flight routes, almost equal. That's actually the result that I kind of expected. It's the first time, it's the second time that I'm doing this poll. So, okay, cool. Thanks, good to know. So um, the poll is still open, so please, um, yeah write, uh, no, not write down, uh, continue uh, to give some answers. Why is this not working? Oh, now it's working. Okay, so um, if I try to conclude, uh, or if I try to squeeze uh, everything what I said into one message, then I think what I've learned in the past 10 years, roughly, where I'm talking about flight levels and all this stuff, then it's really like, when we're talking about business agility, then it's totally not, not about methods and frameworks. Methods and frameworks is totally uninteresting, at least for me, when it comes to business agility. Business agility is about the interactions between your work systems. And that's exactly what we are trying to focus on when we talk about flight levels. Flight levels connect um, your work systems. That's basically it. Thank you so much. So uh, just a short app. Uh, if you want to learn more about flight level system architecture, I'm running an online workshop together with JP and Jose, the great um, yeah, organizers of this uh, conference. Uh, it starts on August the 10th. Here's the link. And yeah, if you want to uh, read about flight levels, uh, there is a coupon for you. Uh, for Rethinking Agile. It's translated into four languages, actually into five languages. It's also translated into Polish. But um, yeah, we don't have a PDF for it. If you have more questions or so, uh, I will be at the booth, uh, at the Flight Levels Academy booth. Show up there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so yeah. much. Klaus, thank you so, yes. so much for that. We do have a number of questions. Do you have a couple of minutes to stay and answer those? Not a problem for me, sure. Fabulous. <laughs> so Alan is asking, is flight level two comparable to the lean value stream concept? So the lean value stream concept. 
um, I don't know the lean value stream concept. I mean, of course, I know what, what a value stream is and I know what lean is, but I don't know if there's a particular lit literature behind the lean value stream concept um, that I don't know. But I would say yes, yes, uh, if we are talking about the right things, because what we are uh, about the same thing, because what we are doing on the flight level two is we want to make the value stream uh, visible. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you. Sophia's asking, how do you align delivery timelines between levels? Do you have any proven approach or tips? That yes. might be something if you can answer <laughs> quickly, or it might be something um, that Sophia could jump into the booth and ask you. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Please uh, come to the booth. I guess that's, that's really, that's a longer discussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's have a look. Um, Alan's asking again, does flight level stop short of managing dependencies between teams? Stop short. What does this mean? <laughs> Sorry, my English. <laughs> um, does it stop short? I suppose that could be one for Alan to come to the booth as well. And we will <laughs> <laughs> move on from that one. And Alan can explain that one in more detail. There, uh, there's, a, there's another talk from Troy McGinnis, uh, I guess this afternoon, and he's uh, talking about dependencies. So uh, that might be fabulous. a good place. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a couple of quick ones. Rebecca is asking, do all levels need daily alignment or recommend daily alignment? Well, uh, maybe not daily, but on a, on a high cadence, maybe on a flight level one, the cadence is a little bit higher uh, than on a flight level three, but we're talking about quick feedback loops, but maybe not daily. Fabulous. Thank you. And Rebecca, again, is there an agile coach which links all levels the whole time? Well, if there is one, then yes. <laughs> so the answer is... <laughs> Flight Levels doesn't say um, you have to have an Agile coach, but of course we offer something like Flight Level Coach as, 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 as a, as a, as a, as a uh, training program. So we think it makes sense that there is someone who's taking care of it. Yeah, okay. but uh, Flight Levels doesn't say you need to have Agile coaches. All right, lovely, thank you. Juliana's asking the same thing as Alan about flight routes being comparable to the lean value stream concept. So again, I recommend that is something to yeah, pick idea. up <laughs> later. Uh, Maria is asking, in your opinion, how important or not is it that people who work primarily at a particular flight level are engaged with the other levels? Very important. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I get the, the, the sh so the very short answer is very important. A little bit longer, but still short is that usually uh, you always see that from the level below, um, there are some uh, representatives in the level above. Um, that's, that's a general pattern that we see quite often. So it's very, very important. So even it makes sense that uh, flight level one people show up on the flight level three. That's Happiness. all about alignment. Thank you. Two more. One from Mara. In big and decentralized organizations, are you using digital tools for mapping it? If so, which one? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Um, so it's, you can also do it without tools, but uh, yes, we are also using tools. So something like Lean Kit, Swift, uh, Kanban, Kanbanize, or Miro are tools. Uh, many, many organizations have uh, Chira actually in place. And uh, I have learned that it's working better and better with Chira. I'm, 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 I'm also surprised, <laughs> but yeah. Thank you. Andres is asking, do you have a fail story and a conclusion of why does it fail? And I'm having problems with company culture to apply this. Mm -hmm. That might need well, a, a bigger one. Bit, bit more thinking. <laughs> Maybe, Andres, go, go along to uh, the Flight Levels booth and have a, a longer chat with Klaus about that. Klaus, I promise you this is the last one. It's very, very quick. <laughs> Are you sharing your slides with the participants? Yes, I guess, definitely. Yes, and how? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that there is a way, uh, like Jose and the, the organizers, uh, JP, Amat, that there is for sure a way how we can make this available. Fabulous. Thank you, everyone, for submitting those questions. Thank you for attending. And again, Klaus, a very big thank you to you. And also thanks to Theo for helping produce this first session. Enjoy cool. the rest of the conference. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Theo.